Hi students, welcome to your math lesson of the day for Wednesday, October 7th, and what year are we in? 2020, the year of unknowing. <laughs> okay, so this is our math lesson of the day. Woo, celebrate. Okay, now I'm going to clear that. So for our math le lesson of the day, we're going to be working on more with um, adding and subtracting with the number zero. But before we begin our lesson of the day, we're going to do a number counting exercise to 60. We've been working on 50, and then I think you, or I know you guys are being awesome, counting at 50. So we're going to take it up a notch and count to 60, okay? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, <laughs> 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Uh, that was a bad number eight, guys. Let me do that again. 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Yay, we did it. Let me put a smiley face. We counted to 60. We're on our way to count into 100, but for now we're counting to 60. But from looking at all these numbers, where do you think is the halfway point from zero to 60? If we took, if we erase these in half, how many do you think will be left over? Let's think about this mathematically. So, we took half of 60, like I would say, like this is half. Like we took half of that, our halfway mark is at 30. So if we count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So, or you can write it this way. 30 plus our good old plus sign. 30 plus 30 equals 60. So this guy right here is our halfway marker. Is the number 30, okay? So again... Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, which is our halfway point to sixty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 
51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. We did it. Yay. We are going to, we're on our way to be, to become a number counting expert. So I'm really excited. We'll be counting to a thousand in no time, a thousand and beyond, but that'll be really exhausting. Okay. So I'm going to draw us a nice little photo. We're going to pretend this is a nice pond. I know, <laughs> such a beautiful pond. And we have five frogs in the pond. So there's one frog, two, three, four, five. We have five frogs. Frogs, okay. Oh, and it contains the O, oh, the short O. Oh. Um, but we're going to pretend none of these frogs leave the pond. So how many frogs are left? Okay. So we're trying to figure out how many, po how many frogs are still in the pond. So we have five frogs. One, two, three, four, five. We have five frogs, but none of them leave. So if none of them leave, we have Actually, since, remember, we, sorry about that. Remember when I said that plus you're adding things together and minus we're taking things away. And none of them are leaving. So, in this case, leaving does mean take away. So, we'll use our minus sign. But none of them left, so that's the number zero. Five minus zero equals how many frogs? Well, none of them left, and if we count again, one, two, three, four, five... We still have five frogs in the pond. So five of them are still there. Okay. We're warming up our brains to subtracting with zero for today. Okay. So that was just one warm-up example. Now you have another example. So in this photo, you have, let's see, two birds. And then you look on the this problem. So there's two. But the number below states, this is nothing. This is for um, a number above. And then minus zero equals how many? So we count from above one, two. We have two birds. Two. Two minus zero equals what? So we're not taking anything away. So it's like that um, the previous problem we were learning about, about the frogs. None of them left the pond. Two minus one is zero. And we can even think about this further and bring it to the number line. So we can even do zero, one, two. So we're on the number two, okay? But we're taking away zero. So can we move on the number line? Not really, since zero doesn't really change um, the direction we're going on the number line. So two minus zero will still be st will still be two, okay? It'll still be the number two. Okay, but what if we're gonna try a different example? So let's go back to the pond. We're going back to the pond where the frogs are, and we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six frogs this time. We're growing our number, or we're growing our frog population. So we have six frogs, okay? But a huge rainstorm is coming to take the frogs away. So, ah, all of them decide to leave. Oh no, they're scared of the storm. So they decided to run for cover. So, how many did we lose? We lost all six. So remember, minus, we're taking away stuff. The frogs went away. So we're going to use our minus sign. And we lost all six. So six minus six is what? Well, if we look on the pond, we still have, there's none. All of them went away. So we have zero. If you're always, like for an example, if you're going to minus the number of something, so for example, 9 minus 9, that would always be 0. 8 minus 8, that's going to be 0. 7 minus 0. 6 minus 6 equals 0. 
5 minus 5 equals 0. 4 minus 4 equals 0. So, like, for example, if you're subtracting a number from itself like the same exact number, it could be um, 1,000 minus 1,000, you're still going to get 0. Um, a billion minus a billion, you're still going to get 0. Like, no matter if it's the same number and you're subtracting it, you're always going to get the number 0, okay? So, we'll be working with subtraction with zeros. But, let me bring up another point to think about. So, let me write an example. Now, I want you to look at these two problems, and I want you to tell me which way is the correct way to write a subtraction problem. If you guessed this one, you are correct. That one is not right. And why is that? So we're going to draw our little number line, friend. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, if you look on the number line, 5 is definitely greater than 0, right? Because it's further away. So 5 is greater than 0. But what's easy, what's easy about you know, using subtraction equations with zero is that the number is always going to go in front of the zero. Like in middle school math, like you're going to realize you're going to learn more about putting the bigger number first because that gets into the negatives. But for now, we're not focusing on the negatives. So for um, subtraction equations now, we're only, only focusing on putting the, the bigger numbers first in the subtraction equation. But yes, this one is not right <laughs> because every number is bigger than zero in this case, okay? So never put this. <laughs> always put like nine minus zero, four minus zero, three minus zero. Always put the bigger number first before zero because um, we're learning about positive numbers. Um, the positive numbers are always going to be bigger than zero, okay? So I don't want to see this. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, now so this is in your math book, but I'm going to go over these terms again. So you have this problem in your math book, 3 minus blank equals 3. Now what number equals that same number? Go into the pawn example. We have one, two, three frog, three little frogs. And, and something happened right here. Like this change happened, but the change is still three. So in this case, none of them left. And you know what it means by none? It means the number zero. So none of them left. That means this number is zero because all of them stayed, none of them changed. So three minus zero equals three. But for example, when you subtract zero from a number, the, the number is always gonna be the difference. So three is always gonna be the difference of this number every time you subtract from zero. So for example, if we do one minus zero equals one, one will be the difference. Like these would always be the same difference because one minus zero would always be one from every number. So we are gonna do some more practice. We're gonna be focusing on subtraction equations this week, okay? And, or, or sorry, subtraction equations with zero this week. So we're going to be having more practice with them, but I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll talk to you guys later.